I've been in the gym, man. It's two weeks, bro. Oh. Better watch out. I'm coming for you, Chris. Every time I set my <laughs> bottle down, there you go. <laughs> You, you yeah. see, you seen Jay Cutler on the You're after me. second part? I saw the video on, <clears throat> where did I see it? I think on Nick Strength and Power. I saw his video. Yeah, not bad, huh? How about 50. When I was 50, I was jacked, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he looks great. He looks great, really. He looks great. No, he's good. That's good, man. Now he said, know. now Tony. I reminded him. I said. Uh, Hold on. Hey, Tony's calling me. Record. Hold on. Hey, uh, hey, you know what we got to do? We got to do, we should give us, because Milos is going for a, a, um, a 60 transformation. Yeah, Jack 60. When, uh, when is your birthday? January 17th. Oh, so but we got to, I, I don't I, know if I can hold it that long. <laughs> I'm, I'm J Jackie 59 right now. I look I've like been, I'll look. i bring in a couple of weeks of training, then I go down for a week or so. Then I go up. Or yeah. Up. And this is my, and this is the same problem I have. I, I trained. I did I did well three weeks, four, almost four weeks before I went to Germany last time, and then that trip fucked me up again. And then I, Columbus fucked me up again, and now again, and now I got to go to Germany next week. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just can't pick myself up when I'm not in, at home and go to a gym. I can't do it. You know, the worst thing is getting in a car and uh, moving towards the gym. Once you're there, oh no, I can drive there and I drive around for two hours if I have to. But to, it's just to go in there to fucking wear your gym clothes that look like you're fucking wearing something five sizes too big. Here it is. I, I swear to God, this is what you should do. You go in and only do your your favorite exercises. I mean, it's something that you love doing. That's your trick. Well, it, it, no, yeah. You know, my favorite exercise is laying on the couch. <laughs> Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even you, bullshit. You would push anything up, you know. The I know. Hey, yeah, okay, okay. You you know you know my strength when I used to push. You know what now? Okay. I, I do incline on the Smith machine. One plate. <laughs> First set I get fifteen. The second set I get ten. <laughs> the third set. The third set I don't do. Yeah, that's <laughs> you have between. Huh. How much rest do you have between? I, uh, <laughs> en hey, enough to write three, four emails. <laughs> you know, you want those guys get on a text message? I'm not proud of myself no more when it comes to training, being serious. You know, this is what is shocking. Fucking Kevin Lebroni, when he came back, you know, he was still pushing like uh, four or five plates, like nothing. I mean, strength goes. I mean, uh, of course. I I'm sad to hear but injuries, you. though. What? Just with injuries, that's the only thing, man. Yeah, but I'm I'm lucky. I have no injuries, man. Damn, you see, but oh, here but it is. I'll still be doing four plates on the incline. Tony, no, Steel. no. Here hey, we go. Tony. <laughs> <What's up? laughs> oh my god! Here we go. What up, Tony? Here Tom. we here we go. The Michael Jackson Tony, of bodybuilding. Tony Tone. What's up, man? How you doing? How you been? Good, the real deal. Long time. <laughs> we, to, I, right? Tony, yeah. we're just talking about you know how hard it is for us, or some of us, to even go to the gym and train. Not Tony. And then, Tony and then I look at you, at uh, sixty-six years of age, probably in better shape than all three of us together. For sure, it's not I probably. It. I yeah. appreciate the compliment, but I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, trust me, I, I'm I'm almost positive that you look better than bo all three of us together. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> Not just me or Chris, all of us. <laughs> I don't know about Milos. Milos is uh, Milos. I, I trust Milos still, still yeah. got a little ripped six pack under his shirt. Tony, yeah, Tony, yeah. The first, Tony you, were the, you were the first bodybuilder I ever seen pull a vacuum. Oh, thank like, you. I was just like, damn, what the hell? Like, <laughs> and that famous vac vacuum to the side, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, they still do that to this day, like they made it up. I told I told Tony a couple of <laughs> days ago, a couple of days ago I had him on the phone, and I told him that he doesn't even remember that I think Remember how I told you guys how I saw John Brown in Germany in a, in a, in a sports store posing, and then I saw also Tony Pearson. I think Tony was the first one I saw. He was... 
doing a seminar in a little bitty gym in Kalsu. I wouldn't even be able to tell you what the name of the gym was. And I wasn't even training back then. I was still, I think I was still breakdancing. Right, right. <laughs> so I go there with friends and said, oh, this is this bodybuilder. And I don't know why, even though I wasn't training, I always was, you know, it's bodybuilder, let's go. I want to see what that looks like. Right. And, then, and there was Tony. And Tony did, he did a workout. And then we kind of asked, you know, while he was doing a workout, we, people asked him questions. And, you know, people didn't speak English very well. So actually, right. I was actually translating for Tony a few things in there, here and there, for people that couldn't understand or didn't, you know, didn't know how to ask the question. But he didn't right. remember that. And that had to be in the early 80s. Early 80s? You're it, talking about 84, 85, around some, that time. Somewhere, I, I couldn't tell you exactly. It could be 84, could be 83, could be 85, somewhere in the early 80s. Okay. Wow. That's okay. when you were in Kalsu, and I remember that. I remember, I couldn't fucking believe it when you turned around in that lapse. It just said, like... <laughs> Uh, Dennis, uh -huh. I want to say something because uh, Tony won junior show when uh, uh, John Brown uh, won some open in the same competition. So imagine if uh, now you said Tony is 66 years old. How old is John? Because John doesn't want to reveal his age, right? You you won teenage show. Uh -huh. John was competing as a as a uh, open. Open class, uh -huh. yeah. There was uh, seventy something. I don't know, but yeah, I remember very well that he were teenage and uh, he was open. <laughs> you know, but, but I tell you, uh, Tony, somebody from Serbia. Mm -hmm. This is what he told me the story, and this guy is famous in Serbia. Uh, mm -hmm. He saw you in Germany, going into the room before it gets uh, posing, right? Uh -huh. It's a normal guy. Mm -hmm. And you came out so fucking crazy pumped and yeah, that he has never seen anything like it in his life. <laughs> yeah. and, and this is a story I heard even before I came to the United States. Like, oh, okay. my God. Like, Tony has some secret. See, <laughs> see, Tony's been around so long, he don't even remember all that stuff back in the days, huh? Tony, you still remember everything? No, I do not. No, yeah. I do you not. remember? Do you remember me running into you at another show in Germany where that was not that long ago? You were guest posing. So this had to be in 2010, 11, right? I don't know. See, I, see I, that's why I understand you. I can't even remember when it was, but I remember right. that I ran into you backstage. Okay. I don't know. Was it the German Nationals or you were the guest poser? I think it was the German Nationals. Yeah. yeah. I remember, yeah. that's when I ran into you again. Because in 2011, 10, 11, I was in Germany again. I did a tour. Oh, really? <laughs> seven years old, I went on tour once again. So, yeah. yeah. In Harlem and uh, Germany. Tony, let's, uh, let's back all the way up. Let's back okay. up. I, I know you were wrestling. That was your yeah. first sport. You were a wrestler. Yes. How did you get to bodybuilding? Um, okay, really, very quick. I have my yes. book out called Driven. And what did I do with Driven? So that's the book. It's on Amazon, self-published. I talk about a lot of stuff in that book. Uh -huh. It's not a bodybuilder's book. It's it's a book about you know uh, life in general, you know hardship and how you survive it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I repeat the question again. I'm so sorry. I said, how did you go from wrestling to bodybuilding? Uh, I, I was on the wrestling team and I, and I messed up my knee. They tore my knee up for me and then I had to retire from, from that sport. And then I, my wrestling coach said, hey, you want to go to a real bodybuilding gym tonight? Because I was in the weight room every day, you know, pumping up my arms. And I go, yeah. So he takes me to this gym called George Turner's Gym in St. Louis, Missouri. I went to high school there and junior high. So I go to George Turner's Gym and I got hooked that day because I was trained like three hours and I was, what, 16 years old or something. George come running over to me. He goes, what the fuck do you think you're doing? He started yelling at me. And he goes, I'm going to train you. So that's how it all started. And George had me training. He's an ex-Marine, so he's a tough guy. And uh, I was doing squats Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10 sets of 10. And George would count the reps for you. So that's how my legs grew. You know, I, I, didn't, have, I didn't have the legs mm. after the my knee, you know, recovered, and then I was squatting for about nine months. That went on for about nine months, and at that point, I said, "George, I'm going to California." So, yeah, that's how it all happened. Where, where did you land in California? 
Uh, I went to L.A. in 76, 1976, and um, George said, go down to Gold's Gym in Venice, California, and look up Ken Waller. <laughs> Maybe he can help you out. You know, I'm 19 years old, so I go down there. And I saw Ken Waller at the gym, but I was terrified of this guy. He was massive. And you know, he, was, he was sitting on a bench. I said, I'm not going to go near this guy. <laughs> so I was afraid. So it was just a long journey to get to where I'm at. You know, Arnold discovered me at the beach one day. He came over and he says, I've been watching you for, for months. And he goes, let's go through the workout. So he, he trained my chest and triceps. So he, he mentored you a little bit too, right? Yes, he did. He did. And he, he was the first guy to send me to, to see Joe Weider. So I went out to see Joe Weider and wrote down the address, tell him I sent you out. I'm sending you out here to write an article for the magazine. I had no titles. I was, you know, just a kid on the beach. Right. But still squatting that 10 sets of 10 in the hot temperature out on the beach. So I think he watched me for a few months to see if I had the heart to do it, you know, do to be able to survive the heat out in, the, um, in Santa Monica. So, yeah, he sent me to uh, Joe Weider, and that's how it all started. You know, I read the magazine back in St. Louis. I knew who these guys were. I went to the original Gold's Gym. I watched it work out. Zane. Zane was there. Robbie was there. Manuel Perry. The list goes on. And I'm just sitting in the corner like, oh, my God, look at these amazing bodies. And, they, and no one was talking. You know, they're very serious back in there. No one's drinking water. They were just training. And I think it was just before the Olympia because it was on top condition and they all had a stone face. And I, I was sitting in the corner going, man, I think I could look like these guys someday. You know how you talk to yourself. Yeah. And, uh, that's how it all began. I mean, I was, I was just totally hooked. Just suck it in. That's, that saved my life. You know, bodybuilding, if you read the book, it, it kind of saved my life. It kept, it kept me focused on something. And then when Arnold said to me one day, that same day, he goes, you're going to be a great champion someday, you know. That stuck in my head. Even though the negative press that I got all along after that, I still remember what he said. And that's all you need. Sometimes one person is, that kind of believes in you. So, so did yeah, you have a lot of doubters too? Oh, I, oh all doubters. <laughs> Are you kidding me? All doubters. <laughs> you name yeah. it. Even from the yeah. beach. Yeah. Starting at the beach. I, I'm getting a book on Thursday. I just ordered it. You know, I, I can't wait to, to get it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Amazon, yes. But, but Tony, you were uh, uh, so known. You, he was the first peeled guy dry to the bone. Remember that? I mean, yeah. his, his conditioning, there was like skinless. Uh, you were among first guys to get in this kind of condition, correct? Yes. Genetically, you know, I got a fast metabolism. So it was my hard gain and putting muscle on. That took forever. And I could get in shape pretty quickly. And, um, yeah, I, I, and plus I've been training twice a day. So I, I, you know, I got into the bodybuilding world because I like training. I train for myself. I always said I'm doing this for myself so I can make a career out of it, maybe. But I'm just training for I enjoy going to the gym, working out twice a day. And then they called me Mr. Overtrain at one point. You need to back off. You know, you'll look better. But I knew better because I'm not a big guy and I, want, I never wanted to be big. I just wanted to be really defined, keep the waist small. You know, and just hit my poses correctly, you know. And I think, un I say, under the light, I think I beat the big guys. So I, always, I always said that. Yeah. But you said 10 sets of 10. Uh, is this everything else you did uh, kind of similar, or did that was just the squats? Just the squats. And apparently, George was only interested in me building my legs. I think he thought the upper body was going to be okay. If I can get some legs on this kid, he might have a chance, you know, out there on the West Coast. So that was the routine. And I, I, I'm grateful for him because. I would have never gotten to body. I didn't have the legs genetics, you know, genetically. Um, but, you know, I had the small waist, very defined, even at, at, at Muscle Beach. So, yeah, yeah. And, and then you got the jury curl. Hey, when Michael Jackson came on. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. we all, hey, we all got it. Chris, you never yeah, got the jury curl? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Michael Jackson, <laughs> 1984. <laughs> <laughs> People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on 
perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. <laughs> Crazy. Hey, Tony, I, I mean, I was a big fan. I was, I mean, I was impressed with the physique. I was, I mean, I still watch. I mean, there was like a show every every other week in Southern California. Yes, exactly. You know, those days, and I was very young, but I'd come and I'd be very close to the stage and watching you. Uh, you know, many times they had you guest pose, and many times you had you had another uh, a female uh, couples uh, training with you. Who who was your favorite? Was it Tina Pack Pack Packinger or Carla? Yeah. Carla, Carla. Carla, Carla Dunlap. Dunlap we, Carl Dunlap, I, we, we, we competed twice together, and there was Juliet Bergman. Juliet Bergman was good with you. Yes, Shelly Gruel. Shelly Gruel, yeah. I she that. trained with John, she competed against, with John Brown before. Remember that? And yeah, they won nationals. So, Shelly, there, there is no favorite. They're, they're all great champions, and I was just, you know, an honor to train with them. It was just hard going from one partner to the next. Now you got to get creative again, you know what I mean? Bodybuilding is an art form, so and uh, Carla was really good, and Shelly was she's an ex gymnast, and Tina had all this muscle. <laughs> and then Juliet had my waistline. I saw Juliet on stage and go, "That's my next partner." <laughs> oh, <laughs> and she said yes. She said okay. yes. So I, I needed her. That's awesome. But Tony, uh, one one thing that probably not too many people know, you competed and you won in more federations than anyone. From AU to NABA to VABA, mm -hmm. the IBB, you were Olympia a couple of times, right? You did that. I don't even know there was some federation that uh, I was not familiar with. But then WBF, when it came about, you competed there. Mm -hmm. uh, how many federations did you compete in? Uh, the WBBG, which is Dan Laurie's contest okay. in New York. So oh. I competed there. And if you won there, which I won the world that day, and you get a ticket to London for NABA. So that's how I and, made it. And NABA. London was the universe. Yes, in 1979. So that was my first time in Europe, <laughs> first time going to the, you know, the contest. And um, that, that was a challenge. Uh, the guy from Turkey, in Lulu. You, know, yeah. you know who that is, in Lulu from Turkey? Yeah, yeah, very, very yeah. good. He won, I came second. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I hit so, all Oh, that was, but that was the amateur part of the universe. That was the amateur NABA Mr. Universe. Oh, uh, see, and, and you did the the medium tall, or what was it? Uh, short. Uh, me, no, short. Medium. Medium. Me, so you did the same the same class I did at the Universe when I first oh, competed. Cool. I competed in England, but back okay. then when I competed, it was in in Birmingham, the Mr. Okay. the Mr. the amateur Mr. Universe. Yeah. And I remember I I competed in the same in the same class in the medium. Me, I think they called it medium tall. Yeah. Medium tall. Okay. Yeah, they changed it to medium tall. I'm because we about the same height, five eight, five nine. Five eight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So so yes, yeah, because because I know exactly, you know. But it had to be a little different back in the seventies compared to the nineties. It was a lot different. Yeah. Lot different. <laughs> that's why I want to. That's what I want to talk to you about too, about bodybuilding in general back in your era. I mean, mm -hmm. we call that the golden era. Okay. You know. So and and we all agree that this was an era that we all looked up to and that we all took inspiration from and the motivation I got from a lot of you guys. And therefore, I want to know from you because you still train, you still train people, you're still very active. You probably also follow the sport still. I do, I do. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so what, what would you say is the major difference from back in your time to today? For me, it's not about size. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because I, I just saw the art form of it. And I just wanted, I mean, Frank Zane is more like that I can see that I wanted to be like. And Robbie Robinson, too. A mixture of Zane and Robbie thrown together. Mm. Because, it, because the, small, the small waist and broad shoulders means so much to me. I mean, like Steve Reeves. I mean, uh, Bob Harris. Samir Renew. Those lines, it's all about the lines. Mm. You know, this is the art and the presentation. Because you said I went backstage and I was like small and I came back, I looked, I looked huge. But that's the, the illusion. I used to go on stage and pose or compete. People run backstage, look at me and go, was that you out there? But the transformation, I'm so small backstage. It's all an illusion. That's what bodybuilding is supposed to have been about. Yes. It's always been for me because for you me, want to transform into something. Yes. And then from pose to pose. You yes. Be, be, uh, before people's eyes. That was exactly. 
Yeah. How heavy? How heavy were you at, uh, at your peak? Uh, my peak, and you know, the WBF, I was at my heaviest. I was about 2.5, but I was really, really cut. Um, I won the Miss America, like 185. I think NABA and win the universe. I went back the following year and I won the pro universe. It was about 190, not so big. But I can have a very small frame and have very small joints. And when I mean, you really shred it and you know how to present it right, you just look so much bigger. Right. So much bigger. Who helps you with your posing? Um, George helped me a little bit. Uh, Kent Keen. Do you guys know who Kent Keen is? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice That's Kent. yeah, he worked with me every week. Um, and I just copied other people. I stole, I, I steal a little bit from everybody and trying to make it my own. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of practice, a lot of practice. And this guy named Jimmy Caruso from uh, Canada, he, he, I think he promoted contests up there and he, a photographer, if you look at Arnold's old photos, it says Jimmy Caruso at the bottom. This guy took me to his studio once. He says, I'm gonna teach you how to pose. For three and a half hours, he taught me all the tricks. How to bend the knee, drop the hips, turn this, do this, do this. And that's where I really picked up and learned a lot. Tony, and, that's that's what I see a lot of people don't, like that's got lost in translation in, in my eyes. It's a lot of professionals, a lot of amateurs. They all have this, that same issue. Like if you watch someone on YouTube and you watch them pose, you don't understand all the different little, <clears throat> the, what type of press you want to put on what foot, what part of the foot, uh, the, the, what joint, what hip area, what where you want to pressure and pull, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, different areas you want to concentrate on in different poses. Mm -hmm. I see that lost, totally lost. Yes, yes. I mean, this guy was a master. I mean, what he did that day, and he says, keep your feet close together, drop your hip, turn the toe, shift your hips this way, flex right. the bicep like this, bring it forward, lean a little bit into it. All these little things. But I rehearsed it a thousand times. I pose like crazy practicing. You see, this when, I got on, when I got on stage, I know when I hit that shot, it's on point. You know. 100%. Yeah. Not just on point, but uh, you are very specific. I watch you so many times. You didn't have a wasted move. Sequence and everything was you know, going for a reason, right? There's a lot of guys that do some dramatic poses, but oh, you, you went in this direction for nothing and you just the, went. The, trans, like, the transition was off, yeah. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> and That's Tony right. was blowing. Oh my God! Everything. If it's this, it goes all yeah. the way. There. Yeah, and, and I, that's how I felt when I saw him pose. It looked like he knew exactly the next three poses that's going to come, and he prepared himself to do exactly that. And, that, and that's yeah. what I realized when I see you posing too. And I'm, for me, it was just, and I'll never forget when he turned around, you know, and he positioned his legs. You know, he's going to go for that last spread. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He oh, reached. Man. He would reach back in there, and I can tell you exactly. And then he would just. Whoop. <laughs> yeah. That's what. That, this is his back. Always reminded me on uh, of a cobra. Yeah. I, I oh yeah. That, that must have been. I listen. Had that on my, now, I now, had that on my notebook. On now, my, uh, yeah. Now, now let's school. let's look at it this way. Now we compare all the best backs in the world. Mm -hmm. When you look at lat spread, the most. I mean, Tony must be up there with the best. Yeah, oh, Ooh, wide all the way down, like I said. All the way, all the the, the lat started right in the trunks, and the abs, <laughs> and then keeps going, 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 going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Now can you can you, can you can you now can you imagine what that did to me as a fucking I don't know maybe nineteen or twenty years old? Fuck me I, up. Who, who was that? <laughs> Tony, Tony, who was that that did a pose in front of you and they did something with their hands? It went like right up in the middle of your middle back, and then you hit the Shelly Gruel. Shelly, Shelly Gruel. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So I got you. Know, I was I'm a student, man. John. I was studying everything, everything, everything. I'm gonna give John Brown some credit because the first two shows Shell and I did to work together, John put together the routine. No, oh, wow. You know they, had worked, they had worked together before, so her and I got together. He put together the routine for us, and that was one of the poses. It's amazing how we lined up. My hands directly in the middle of her back. You oh, couldn't see each crazy, other. Crazy, crazy. Uh, you know why? Why I know that you work with John also because facial expressions, not just poses, but uh, facial. Uh, where do you look? 
there is a specific pace for each pose. Yes. You look away, you look down, chin down, smile. That, that's, uh, you had that. Yeah. Like the Michael Jordan performance, I don't know Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson performance. Yeah. Uh, everything was perfect. Like it's pure profile, you know, up and down. I mean, uh, it had to be John Brown touch. I, I'm glad that uh, that's the case. Yes. And then after that, I worked with Carla Dunlap. And, you know, you're right. Your face means a lot in the presentation because that's what pulls yeah. the people in. If you're having fun, they're going to have fun. And it's right. like if you're enjoying yourself, they're going to support you even more. So uh, your face expression, the transitions, the timing of the transition, it all plays together. Um, but I, I got to the point, the first couple of poses, I knew what I was going to do. And then I just go. Oh, you just, just improvise. I just flow. Just go. Yeah, but you got you got to know the poses. You got to know your transitions in order to do that. Sure, I, I have rehearsed it a thousand times. I've, right, I, I'm right. Just ready to go. It's almost, it's almost like I used to tell people. It's almost like you're going to dance at a nightclub. You don't need to practice your steps. You just got to know the song, and then right, you go. But yeah. you've been practicing so much that it just so comes much, natural yeah. to you. Exactly, yeah. natural. Tony. Um, there's something special happening about you right now that's about to uh, come out in the near future. You have a documentary coming out. Yes. Can, yes. can you talk to us about this? Can you? Is there anything you can tell us about the documentary? Yeah, it's, it's, about, it's based on the book, and it's my life story. And people say, oh, it's a sports documentary, but it's not about sports. I became an athlete, but um, it's... Um, it's about my life, and it's gonna it's it premiered in the in um in Hollywood, and the film festival. What was the name? Of it? Nice. So yeah, it, it appeared at the film festival, and we won the best film award. Wow! For documentaries. That's amazing. That was in uh, Man's Chinese Theater about three weeks ago. Wow! Oh, oh wow! For real. How did that feel, man? Yeah. It was mind blowing. It was like I can't believe this is happening. So I had to go and watch it for the first time. After two years, we finally got this thing done. And they submitted it. They accepted it in Hollywood. So I'm sitting there watching. It's an hour and a half long. And it was very, for me, once you see it or read the book, it's very emotional, very intense. But it's hard to sit and watch yourself on the screen. So I, I try to detach from this. not me. <laughs> mm. It's somebody else up there. But um, it just shows where, where I started down south in Tennessee and how I was raised and, um, you know, without a family and still survive somehow. You know, people don't understand. It's, it's a mindset. You know, you, I, I could be dead. I could be in jail. I, you know, I could be angry. I could be all these things. But I chose not to be. And I chose the gym to release some of this tension. <laughs> so um, it, 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 it came out well. We're going to try to submit it to uh, Tribeca and the one in New York, uh, Robert De Niro owns that one, mm -hmm. and um, just see where it goes from there. Um, if you guys want to follow us, you, they can follow us at T Tequila Mockingbird, at T Tequila Mockingbird, and at Tony Pearson eighty seven, you know, for updates. Mm -hmm. So now we're trying to figure out where that is, is. Is that on? Is that on YouTube or? No, no, no. T Tequila Mockingbird's production company out of L.A. They're okay. On, they're, so they're when on you, Instagram, they're on Facebook. So you get, yeah, to, to Keila Mockingbird. Okay. And so Tony Pearson, eighty-seven, that will also be on Facebook. Yes, and Instagram. And Instagram. Okay. Yes. So, so with those two platforms, you can see where, where what we're going to do with it. Where is it going to go? Is it going to be on Hulu or Amazon or Netflix or? No, nah, it's definitely that, something I want to watch. Yeah, yeah it's it's, uh, it's, it's a book. Well, I don't know why you guys are waiting for order the book. Uh, well, I've, I know when Milos reads it, we all know what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, we, we are all inspired by Tony. I mean, yes. you are really oh, yeah. a superstar. I mean, uh, coming from, from Serbia, especially hearing this story and then seeing you perform, you know, uh, I think this 88 uh, in L.A. there was a pro show. I think Mike, uh, Mike Christian won. Mm hmm I, I was there. That was the first pro show I've ever seen in my life, and you were competing, and and I was just, ah. mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, just like you said, Dennis, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the first time you're seeing a pro bodybuilder at that level. I yes. saw, I saw Tony, John, and then Lee Haney, and that that was it for me. I said, now I gotta go. 
I got it. <laughs> now I got to go. I, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just funny because everyone seems to be under that uh, umbrella of uh, John Brown, uh, yourself, Robbie Robinson, uh, and all those guys are, you know, still like to this day, like very, very inspirational. That's and, that's what I'm that's what I'm tripping off of because, you know, this I mean, we we talking uh, uh, people that competed fifty years ago. 40, yeah. 50 years ago, and we still talk about him like this is this is something special. So, yeah. do you think in fifty years from now we talk about some of the guys today? Do you know what I'm saying? The, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to dog no. I just think it's different. I think it's different, Dennis, because it was more like it was like our Bible. Our Bible came. I understand, but it's still going to be the same Bible in fifty years from now. It will be. But you I know, that, that's what I'm it, trying to say. I just think people look at it differently nowadays because now if you win a contest or you, let's say you spring up and then you fade away and then there's more people, there's more information every day like this, I think it's easier to forget and it was a lot easier to remember when we all looked forward to that one magazine per month and we all got the books, we all had the Bibles. And then we studied that, and then we studied the people. I think it was, it was easier to study people and get to know more about that person than there is today. When you, I don't you know. think so, you don't think it's easier to study someone today with social media, all their I businesses mean, yeah. out. I just think the I think the attitude behind it is different. Uh, I, I'm you just got, I'm you just got so much coming every day. Yeah, I just think that. Listen, I can still remember. The people that competed at the Olympias in the 80s, in the 90s. If you ask me about the Olympia lineup from 10 years ago, I might miss five, six, seven, eight people because I don't remember. Right. Milos is smiling like me right now. I said, I got one of them days today where I, I just got to say it. No, you, yeah. know, you know what I'm saying? I can remember everybody from back in the days. That's no, exactly what you're saying. It's not like we lost the interest in bodybuilding. Yeah. We followed, and this time we were present there, but we remember uh, Tony competing, right? 84, you competed with uh, Sergio Oliva coming back, right? At the yeah. 84 Olympia. I mean, yeah. this is something I, I want to know. I mean, because uh, Sergio came back. Uh, you competed with Sergio before too, right? In, uh, yeah, in Paris. In Paris, yeah. 1980. Yeah, but you know what's funny now? Now, let me go back two years. Who got sixth place in 2020? <laughs> Chris, you first. Don't look, Milos, don't look. Uh, you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. But, but when you were saying, I, I agree with you because I would have no clue. You, I would but, have to really, you know, slowly. But this is, this is two years like, ago. Yes. Who got yeah. sixth at the Olympia? I know it because it was in the year, but still. Is it? I was thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> but you get my point, right? But, but, you know, so... And Tony, uh, I'm just going to touch that. I know that I'm pain in the ass about posing and everything, but you are a <laughs> premier poser and uh, you appreciate the posing. The reason maybe, uh, Dennis, we don't remember all that stuff because before we get into every posing routine, you know, you appreciated what they presented. I mean, what, you know, Tony's posing routines, are like you almost, you, you can replicate right now with just thinking a little bit what he did. Do you remember Jan Valier's posing routine from 2020? <laughs> or 21 or 2022? You know, uh, this uh, we lost that. Yeah, part. but that, I don't think that's the, that's, okay. It is. I don't I, think, I, I, yeah, you're right, you're right. But I don't think it's the athlete's fault 100% because when you take the judging out from the posing routine, you can't expect them to put tremendous time into their routine unless they're doing this for their fans. Hey, listen, if you're not going to uh, score the mathematics, I'm not going to study mathematics. Uh, hey, but I, I just, okay, so how about this uh, theory, uh, Dennis? If you have people who, when, you, when they bring you into the sport, in their mind, it was already in their mind how the importance of posing. Right, yeah, fine. and that's probably the reason and why I, you guys it all... Was, it, was less, it was less coaching, it was more people that was you know, helping each other and just getting better, getting, helping each other to get better and better. But now one person does a show, they're coaching the next week. And then these people don't have that mindset 
of of the art of posing and the reason and the importance of what it will do to your body as you get ready for competition. It's just <coughs> not taught because it's just, it's just an array of coaches and, and people trying to say like, this is the way you do this or that, but it's, it's just not the same mindset behind what they're doing. Do you agree with that or no? I totally agree. And I also agree, you know, cause I also remember, but back in the days, nobody had an issue to take their shirt off after the workout and pose in front of the mirror. Now, people don't want to show themselves. <laughs> they, don't, they wouldn't even do that so people can't see what they look like. Back days, <laughs> but yeah, back days, nobody, you guys, I remember, I remember, and that was when I came to the U.S. I remember Sean Ray used to fucking, fucking take his shirt off and pose in the mirror in the gym after each session. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You you pose every day, right? Back in the day. Yes, every day you practice. I I would go sit in the sauna and pose in there. So I figured I can if I can do endure that heat in there posing, I'm okay on stage. Hmm. I'm good on stage. You were the because, master. You know, back in those days in the lineup, when you're not a big guy, you got to be flexed the whole time. Abs, hmm. position. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And even long. even when you're on the side, exactly for the for the. For your the lineup and the lineup, oh, the lineup that you out like you exactly. Got that Remember could be was good at that. I used to watch every little aspect. That could be two. Or, that, could, watch. that could be two or three hours of standing and flex the whole time. Wait so how time. how yeah? This is another question I have because she just said say two hours. How long did pre judging last back then? It could go on for two or three hours. Are they compare you this guy and then this yeah. guy and this yeah. guy? Yeah, so you, you got, you got 15, right 20 competitors, a lot of comparisons going on here. And, and, and now, 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 now we have 30 competitors in this. It's a couple, a couple of comparisons, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Tony, you, you, were, you were competing when it was, it was, a, it could be a 15 minute routine. Sometimes. Yes, you could pose as long as you want, and as long I as you and wanted I, to back then. <laughs> and I go, I, I usually go over six minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, Tony has that uh, saran wrap around his like uh, stomach glued to the spine today, like still today. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. And, uh, yeah, th th and uh, lack separation of the track. So when you're saying you were in a, in a side... And your legs would be super separated, not moving, you know, because nowadays you just look at the guys, drop the shoulder, stomach out, lose the legs. You know, there's uh, <laughs> yeah. none of what you had before. But Tony, I'm dying to ask you this because you said you train twice a day and you have a super fast metabolism. I know John Brown never died a day in his life. I mean, he would eat, and there's no diet food or anything. How did you eat? It was pretty strict diet, you know, you know, egg whites and you're around uh, because you were always chicken. clean. But you you um, eat clean. Yes, yes. But you eat a lot. Um, no, I'm not a big eater. I don't eat a lot. But I, I'm either. surprised how I could gain muscle and not really eating a lot. I was eating tuna fish at one point. That's probably you probably read about that tuna fish and coffee. So and I still grew. I mean, I don't I don't understand it. <laughs> Genetically, I, I thank God I was blessed to be able to put on some muscle size that I was not a big eater, which is a good thing. But, you know, chicken, it's always chicken, egg whites, and brown rice and yams and protein shakes at the time. So, yeah, very, very basic stuff. People make this so complicated. It's really easy. You just cut out the carbs, increase your protein, train twice a day. Right. You just, you <laughs> I mean, they're really training twice a day. Not in that tongue. None of this pretending to be training, really training twice a day. <laughs> we just, we did, well, back then, people just, we just looked at the mirror and what the, what the mirror showed, told you. Exactly. You adjust your diet. Your mirror tells you this, you adjust your diet. Okay. Yes. Every day, the mirror is going to tell you what you're going to do that day. You look flat, you look full, you look good, you look <laughs> like you're holding water. Now did, you know what did you, you Did you weigh your food at all or you just ate? Never weigh my food. Yeah. Never count a calorie. 
I put it on the plate up too much. Do, 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 do. Yeah. No, it's very no, no macros, Tony. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not that complicated. <laughs> but you know a super ripped year around. You know? Yeah. You know, I, you, I, won my, I, won my, I won my last show 2020, won the universe here. In I was the about to say you competed not too long ago. Yeah, 2020. So I was 63. So that, that was it. I retired. Damn. Damn. So you won yeah, you won the universe. How many years? Huh? How many years were you up there? Uh, I've been competing since 76 until Shit. 2020. <laughs> 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 I think we better count them because Dexter think he got the record. I think you made it got him. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> how do you, do you have an idea of how many times you competed, number wise? No, but I know on the amateur level, I hit all the shows in Southern California back in those days, and, and I forgot. I, I, somebody that recently, I saw the list, the shows that I did. I totally forgot. Like the Gold Gym Classic. And, Take and a look, man. You I got, think I, I think I think I counted what I could find. You did like fifty pro shows. Wow. That's without the amateurs. Right. But I want to know the amateur and the pro, because I, I like to know mine also, because... I did 110. 110. Oh, 70, 72 pro, 38 uh, amateurs, yeah. Wow. Amateur shit. Oh, my God. So his, <laughs> his, first show, his first show, his first show, Tony's first show was the AAU Goals Classic, 1976, teen overall winner. Then 76, he did the AAU Gold Classic, the teen short first place. So you had like one, two, uh, uh, this is all amateur shows. Damn, let me see. Uh, this is a shitload of them. <laughs> when, did you, when did you turn the IBB pro? Well, his first IFBB pro show, I can tell you right now, was in 81. In yeah. Australia. Uh, that show's not even in there. There's 81 of shows here, Canada, Canada Pro. Okay, the first one's in Australia in 81, uh, the Universe. Was Dennis Tinarino won, that came in third. There's 81, there's a Canada Pro, 81 Grand Prix in Belgium, in Wales, mm -hmm. the Universe Pro, Wild Bob World Cup. You did, <laughs> you did, you did a lot of shows in 81 in different federations. You know, yes, yes, yes. I mean, I had a, a pleasure, 93 Chicago. I remember that you, you competed. You okay. Know, so I, I was on the stage with, with Tony that was like, ah, taking pictures backstage. Yeah. Uh, Chris, I, I think you competed with Tony in, a, in a, some show. Yeah. I think the Iron Man, right? Okay. Yeah, Iron Man. Yeah. Iron Man. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But yeah, it was, I mean, like you said, we just got a lot of admiration for you, Tony, and I just feel like, man, this is a, uh, yeah, just to get a chance to talk, I haven't talked to you in a while, but it just right. brought a lot of memories and a lot of fond memories of watching you up there and even all the guest posing, like I said, with so many in Southern California, you know, you, JJ Marsh, all those guys were always, you know, always guest posing, always active, right. looking good in the off season. Mm -hmm. you know, just a testament of you know who you are as a champion. Was it was it um, was it easier to to get into bodybuilding because you've done something so hard like wrestling? I know wrestling. I've been, I've wrestled myself, so and when you I know. started bodybuilding, I was like, well, shit, this is easy, and I get to eat. I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just starved to death. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah was it was it was kind of easy to transition to bodybuilding because you know. Wrestling's a lot of discipline too. You gotta that practice is. every day in the mats. Drilling, and drilling, drilling. You gotta drop weight. That's really hardcore. So. Yeah. Man. So coming to bodybuilding was kind of easy to me. It was just fun. Yeah. I was training with Robbie and 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 Bill Grant, all these guys. I was just having fun. I, was, I, was I, I trained with Robbie too. He took me under my under his wing as a teenager. Uh -huh. We just closed together in in Spain uh, for the first time, and then I got a chance to be like. That close to a real bodybuilder, he was he was cooking his own food in his room and shit, <laughs> on the road in Europe, cooking his own food in the room. <laughs> That's what I did. I'd take the pots and pans in the suitcase. Yeah, he had the pots and pans in his back. I, I used like, to do that too. You, Chris, you never you never did Damn, that. This, but as a teenager, you first see this, and I'm going like, holy shit! Yeah, this like, is serious. <laughs> <laughs> I Man. always traveled with a suitcase just for griddle everything. 
Yes. yes. We George can. George Foreman Grill. There you go. You there know, you go. You, hey, you know how many George Foremans I messed up? Because I because I did I didn't know that there's difference in, vo- in, in voltage. Different, different voltage. Yes. <laughs> I was Two, like, right how many here. clippers? How many clippers did I break? I, <laughs> you killed it. You killed it. I thought, hey, I thought I was lucky. I bought a couple of George Foremans in California on my way back to Thailand. You know, as like they were fifty nine or sixty nine dollars, like you know, like this little size, but good, yeah, good enough. Right, yeah. I was like, man, I'm good to go. Man, I plucked that thing in, had some chicken on there. That that smelled like I was like that chicken was done in like thirty uh, seconds. You uh, <laughs> burnt it up. <laughs> the whole machine. I was like, oh damn. Yeah, the, the, the who was your inspiration back in the day when you started? Who who was the guy you looked up to? Uh, of course, Robbie and, and Arnold, and so those, yeah, Arnold, of course, and then um, Robbie said, "Hey, let's go to Orange County and watch Frank Zane guest post." And I'm, you know, I, I didn't have any titles. I said, "Okay," so we go there and then sitting in his first row, and Zane comes on, and he was waiting for his music to start, so he's standing from the side, he wasn't facing us, and I go, "Mr. Olympia," but then when the music started, oh man. <laughs> he got bigger from every pose. Hey, did uh, I? Know. It, was, it was amazing to watch. Tony, did you did you pose with Robbie in the posing room and and the uh, the training? No, never did. No, no. Okay, no. I used to train. I used to pose with him, man. He, dude, he was in there stomping his feet at me and. God damn it, Chris! You got, he was just so mad. I was like, really? I'm just in like a soldier. I'm just like, I'm saying nothing. I'm just in there. In a pool of sweat. I never saw that side. Oh I, yeah. I trained with him and he oh, yeah. had a few words. So oh, yeah. you don't mess up when you're training with this guy. You know that. Oh, I know. I know. He was dead and what about serious. watching those bicep peaks on the preacher? <laughs> I used to tell people about it, they don't understand. Like I'm a teenager watching this. It's like, what in the fuck? But Tony like, Tony <laughs> had but Tony had them crazy peaks too, though. Yeah, yeah, I know, but Robbie, Robbie, man. <laughs> I, 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 so I tell people the same story. I said he had two peaks in his bicep, and we all watched him develop a third peak on that. Thing. Oh, yeah. It's just, <laughs> and speaking and of that. during the set. It's just like, damn. I, I, I watched in uh, Dragon's Lair. Uh, Tony was there, and uh, Danny Hester was there. And Danny was doing uh, bi- uh, biceps barber curls. Yeah. And here comes Tony to adjust him. And uh, whatever you did there in, in the 13 seconds, I mean, Danny said that he never felt the biceps like that. I mean, uh, so I, I know that you're so much into the training, tuning, everything. You train clients still, right, daily? Mm-hmm. Yes, I still have clients here in Vegas. Where? At uh, Anytime Fitness. <laughs> it's it's a well-equipped small gym, and, you know, in most Vegas? of the clientele is from 40 years old and up. Are you in Vegas? Yes, I'm in Vegas. Yeah, so okay. Buddy, mind is open to any time fitness out there. I'm gonna. I don't know exactly which one, but T- just- Tony, I know you don't have much time. You have an hour only because you got to get back to 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 the gym. I have right. a final question for you that I want to ask you, and I, I I cannot let you go without asking you that question. You know, okay. from what you follow now, hmm. who is your favorite physique today? Hmm. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I, because for me, it's a whole different world. I came from a different world. I know, you know, I know. But when you look at the guys or whatever, whoever you see and whoever you watch, who would you say is the physique that you like the most? I liked. Um, who came in second this year? Uh, Derek Lunsford. That's what. Yeah. American guy. What's his name? Derek uh, Lunsford. Okay. Yeah, I, I like his physique. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. It's it's, it's it's with the with the with the vacuum, the big lights. Right. Yeah. It's, exactly. Yeah. 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 But this is why I don't judge because I would sit there and go vote for the guy who kind of looks like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get you. That's why I want. I just want to ask this question to everybody who comes on, just to see what they see when they look yeah. at, the, at the crop if the of bodybuilders today. The guy's got nice lines. He's really conditioned, and he knows how to present it well. I mean, you know, um, what's his name who retired from? Uh, oh God. What's his name? The Dreads with the Dread. Uh, the black guy. What's his name? Dreads. Who retired with Dreads? Years oh, ago. Oh, you're talking about um, uh, from New York? Um, Ty, Ty Green? I, yeah. yeah. Oh, he had one Dread. Yeah, now, okay. To me, <laughs> me, 
Kai had it, had it all there. Posing. He's very unique. Right, right. Really shredded. Had all the body parts. To me, everything was there. Yeah. The taper was there. The flare was there. You know what I'm saying? So it, you know, that's that's how I would score people. Right. I'm looking at the classic look. I mean, he did he did really well while he was competing. I mean, oh, he did really well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he placed. I mean, he did. He, did he get second four times, three or four times? Four In times. First, I thought he should have won. A lot of people thought he should have won at least one, but yeah. uh, you know, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day. I always look forward to his routine because he's going to give a performance. True, true, true. I feel like you pay your money to see your performance. Yeah. I wish he didn't. I wish he would have, you know, not to stop competing. Because... Did it to Milo's ears. Huh? Yeah. Did, did you catch that? Did you catch that? <laughs> he's looking forward to see the routine, and that's why people are paying to go there and see it, yeah. right? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Every time I went to a bodybuilding, <laughs> I went to a bodybuilding contest. I'm looking for a routine from these guys. Yes. Milo said, "Thank you, and now I can rest my case." <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's 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 true. It's true. Yeah. But there's one. There's one because uh, I wanted to ask you always. You were in different federation. You came to you said 1981 to uh, uh, the IBB. But you competed in 70s with Tom Platz and Mike Menzer, and there was some show. No, it, well, the Mr. America was the was the, where it all started. <laughs> it was not the A A A U A A U Mr. America seventy eight. Okay, so that was the first time I was on a national stage, big stage. Well, I competed in junior national, but going to the Mr. America seventy eight, Tom Platts was there, Ron Tufel. Um, okay, uh, Dennis, you're looking there. So, C seventy eight. Seventy eight. 78, I see the Mr. America, 78, Mr. America, Mr. California, Mr. Junior America, Junior Mr. America, 78, Junior Mr. USA, Junior Mr. USA, that's all 78. And, and, no, he, was, I, and he was winning everything. <laughs> <laughs> he was winning, he was just cleaning up the house. So from there, that's when I, you know, when I so went Mr. America, you know, I had the suspension. I don't know if you guys know that, I had a life suspension. For the IBB. No. no. Didn't know you didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all in the book. So, okay. Uh, I'm getting on Thursday. Yeah. So, I, that's why I went to uh, WBBG in New York and um, from there to London to the, then Waba, then Naba. So, because I was suspended, there's nowhere else to go. And then I got reinstated. And then Arnold says, Why don't you go to Australia in 1981? That's my first time on IBB stage, 1981. That was a what? What was it, Mister Universe? In Australia, but that was was that the IFBB? IFBB. Dennis Tinarino won. Um, oh, that I, that was the Amateur World Championship today. Well, that title was Mister Universe. I know they used to call it Mister Universe, they but it's it. yeah, they changed. It's it, the right? World Championships. Yeah, yeah exactly. there's also it, in the U.S. they called it the Universe, and everywhere else in the world it was the World Championships. Okay, yeah. So that was my first time on IFBB stage, and then, like you said, I competed back here in the States from then from then on. I mean, I was in every show. I competed in all the shows. Right. I was not winning, but I was competing. So, you know, there's a lot of things happen. You'll read about that. So Okay. That's not in the documentary because it's an hour and a half long. It would take three hours to put it all in, in the movie. Was there anything in, the in there that you wanted in there but didn't get, didn't make the cut? Or anything? What's that now? Is there anything that happened or transpired in your life that you wanted in the documentary, but it didn't? Uh, yes, my life story. The most mm -hmm. important is the life story, not about the politics of the IVV, not about how many titles that won, because I want the average person to watch this. You know, some people came to me after the documentary was finished. They said, "Hey, we don't know anything about bodybuilding, but we got a great education about it today." But it's your story that you know that we like. It's your story how you survive. It's a survival story. So, um, like I said, in the book, I put a lot of stuff in there about how I got to the IVB and how we got to Europe and how I thought I should have won more shows and blah, 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 blah. So, it, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it, it's, it goes pretty deep. It goes pretty deep. But, um, you know, I'm just being honest and telling the truth. <laughs> in the day, the weeder is a lot of credit. You know, so without Joe Weeder, there wouldn't be bodybuilding. Right. I wouldn't have a career. I mean, getting reinstated allowed me to guest pose and do uh, competitions, compete, and do guest posing. That's how I made a living. Right. 
So, I mean, in Europe was great. Nabo was wonderful. Guava was great in Europe, but it was short lived. And, you know, I won the shows, and now, now what do you do? Yeah, so, at the Naba, there's, there's only I'm one. Home. Naba only has one pro show, the Naba Universe. Right. So uh, f- first year I got second, I came uh, and I won it next year. And, and Wab, I won the world and the New Bray show, Serge New Bray show. So after that, now what do you do? I came home. And yeah. to do what? So I oh. gave the Weeder, pra- I, I praised them. I said, hey, thank God we had Joe Weeder and Ben Weeder. They created the sport, they gave us a platform right. to make a living. You do what you enjoy doing. We're awesome. Yeah, it's so true. And we all we all thank Joe for yeah. where where we are today. At basically because you know it's right. the same. We feel the same. Yes, I, you know I did the European tour, guest posing on seminars, all that stuff. That came to an end. <laughs> right. You can't yeah. remember how many times you keep going back. So yeah. Yeah, awesome. and that's another thing with the leaders, man. We all had a chance, you know, on this panel to actually speak with Joe and have a relationship with Joe, and. Uh, that's that's another thing that like that that central piece of of a person that would spend that time with you and stuff. That's right. that's that was awesome. I'm glad yeah. I'm just glad I got a chance to uh, experience that. And I'm glad I got you, I had you on here today, man. That's why on that note, Tony, I want to thank you for squeezing, you know, squeezing us in for an hour today because I know you got to run. And I'm going to let you go. I really appreciate you, man. And uh, my, my plan is to do one of them old school round tables with a bunch of older guys. I'm, I'm going to say older guys, uh, you know, no, no, dis- <laughs> no disrespect. I consider myself an older guy, too, where we have like maybe eight to ten guys and have a real round table to talk, you know, get some stories out from back in the day. So I, I will definitely contact you and see if you're up for it when it's time. Absolutely. Let me know. All right. Yes. I appreciate yes. you coming on. Chris, I appreciate Milos. You guys. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah. guys too. Take care, guys. Brother. Peace out. All right. Peace yeah. out.